Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we will be talking about creating banners using the Banners widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. We are on the page where you can see some examples of what you can do with this widget. All of these you see here are banners, and depending on what you need them to do, they can be used to draw attention, advertise, highlight information, all kinds of things. And with the Banners widget from key add-ons, you'll get numerous customization options. These include different buttons, typography options, alignment, and spacing settings. Generally, a lot of ways to make this widget work for you. Additionally, you can combine this widget with any of the others in the key add-ons for Elementor collection to create your ideal design. So, let's see how all of these options I just mentioned look like from the back end. Head over to your page, and in the Elementor sidebar, search for banners. There it is. Just drag it over to the right. This is what it looks like by default. There is a background image and some text. So, when you start to customize it, the first thing you can change is the layout. Other than the standard, which you can see on the right, we have in box, which looks like this. For my chosen design, I'm going to stick with standard. Now, before we dive into the rest of these options, I want to replace the content with my own. So, I'll skip ahead to the content section. The first option is for the title. That's this text here. I'm going to replace it with my own. Just a sec. OK. Below that, we have the subtitle. That's this text on the page. I'll erase it. I don't plan on using it. And then we're left with this dummy text here. Give me a moment while I type in replacement. I'm going to use some of the same content that we saw on the widgets page. With that done, I can go back to the general settings so we can cover all the other options that are left there. So we stopped at this one, the image. You can click on this field to upload a new image. I'll use this one, insert media. Now, the text isn't very noticeable, but I'll be sorting that out later using the style options. For now, sticking with the image, we can set its proportions. There are different settings you can use, but I'll stick with original. Then we have this option, to enable the button. I'll switch mine to yes, because I want to have a button on my banner. And then I can set the link for the button. I'll just put a hashtag as a placeholder, but you should add an actual URL here. Now, the option below this is interesting. If we keep the link overlay enabled, it means the link we set will be active over the entire banner. You can see the whole thing is clickable when I hover over it. In fact, if you set a link and don't add a button, then the enabled link overlay will still keep the link active over your banner. However, if you disable it, only the button will be linked. I'll keep mine enabled. OK, the next section, content, is one we already covered, so let's move on to the button section. The options here let us pick things like the button layout. It can be filled, as we've seen, but it can also be outlined or textual. I'm going to stick with filled. And we can also pick its type. There's standard, which we see on the page, with inner border, and boxed. But you need to add an icon to it separately. I'll use standard. Then we can enable a button text underline. It does pretty much just what its title suggests. After that, there's the size option. The default one is normal, but you can switch it to small, or large, or normal full width. I'll go back to normal for my button. Then in the field below it, you can replace the button text. I'll do that. Just a sec. There. After this, we have a section for the button icon. It lets us add an icon to our button. You can pick one from the icon library or upload an SVG. I'm going to use an SVG that's already in my media library. Insert. And if you use an icon, you can pick if it will be positioned to the right or the left of the button text. I'll keep mine on the right. OK. Below this, we have the developer tools. When we open them, we can see there's just one option here. And we can switch its setting to yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, which we can easily copy for use elsewhere on our site. All right, that's it. Let's move on to the Style tab and see what we have in there. For starters, there's the banner padding. You can increase the values to create a padding around your banner content. 
However, if you don't want to increase the values on all sides evenly, you can click here to delink the fields and reset the values. I'll also switch to percentages as my unit of measure and put 20 on the right and on the left. OK. And don't worry, I won't be leaving the content this lopsided, I just plan on using a different option to adjust its vertical alignment. Moving on, we have the banner border radius. It lets us curve the sharp edges of the banner element, the image essentially, or its border if we set one. I'm happy keeping my banner the way it is, so I won't change anything here. After this, we have the banner box shadow option. With it, we can add a shadow to our banner element. As soon as I click on it, the shadow gets activated and then we can adjust its spread, its blur, its vertical and horizontal positioning and so on. And we have the same option for setting the shadow that will appear only on hover. Next, there's the content vertical alignment option. The default setting is at the bottom, but I'll switch mine to the middle. There. And then I'll use the content horizontal alignment to switch from left to center. Alright, this looks much neater already. Now, in the style section, there are different settings for the text content. The first one is the title tag. So you can pick any of these here. For myself, I'll switch to the H2 tag. So my title is a bit bigger and more prominent now. Next, we have the title color option. I'll make my title text plain white. There. And then we have the title typography. With these options, you can pick things like the font family for the title. You can scroll through this list or search for the font if you know its name. I'll search for mine. There it is. Then we can pick the font size using this option. Adjust it with the slider or type in a value, whichever you find easier. After that, we have the weight option where we can pick any of these values to set the font weight. And with the text transform option, we can make the title, for example, uppercase. And using style, we can turn the title text to italic, among others. There's also the decoration option, which lets us add a line over, under, or through the title text. Then the line height, which can be in ems or pixels, can be used to give us a bit more space between the title and the text. Again, you can use the slider or type in a value if you find it easier. Finally, there's letter spacing for creating more space between the letters in the title. And that's it for the title typography options. After that, we have the subtitle tag. Since I erased my subtitle, the following few options won't do much for me. But if you kept yours, this is where you can set its tag, color and adjust the typography options. Next, we have the same options for the text. So we can change its tag. I'll put H5. Then we can change its color. I'll set white to match my title. And then we have the text typography options. They are the same as the title typography options we just covered, so I don't think we need to go over them again. I'll just use the weight option to set 400 as the value I want to use on my text. OK. Moving on, the next section is for spacing style. The settings here include the title margin top which, when you increase it, will push the title text and the rest of your content alongside it downwards. Then we have something similar for the text margin top. It allows us to add more space above the text, so it's separated from the title. I'm going to set 21 pixels for this. And finally, we have the button margin top. Just as the preceding options, this one creates more space above the button, separating it from the text above it. I'll set 52 pixels for this. OK. After this, we have the button style section. Within it, we have the typography. It's composed of the same settings we've seen before when styling the text content. So I don't think we need to cover them again. Then we have these switches, normal and hover, and each reveals different options. Under normal, we have the text color. You can set anything you like. I'll put a very dark gray for my button text. Then we have the background color. Again, you can set anything you like, but I'll make my button white to match the text and title color. There's also a border color. To use it, you can pick a color, say this, and then add a width for the border to appear. I don't plan on using a border, so I'll just reset this. OK, now let's see what's under hover. At first glance, we recognize most of these options. We had the same in the normal settings. So there's text color, but we can only see it on hover. 
There's the background color as well. And the border hover color too. But this is a new one, the reveal background. None is the default setting, but we also have the horizontal. And if you hover now, nothing seems to happen. That's because this option works in tandem with the background hover color. So I need to pick one. This, for example. And now when I hover, this is what we get. And there's also the vertical setting that gets you this effect. I'll go back to using none. Now, let's get back to the rest of the options in this section. And that includes the border radius. By default, we can see the button already has a bit of a radius set. We can increase that easily. Or we can remove it entirely by setting 0. Next, we have the padding for the button text. So we can create more space around it. As using the same padding values on all sides doesn't look all that great, I'll erase and then delink the fields. Now I can set 14 pixels at the top, 40 on the right, 13 at the bottom, and 40 on the left. There we go. After this, we have the button icon style. For starters, there's the option to adjust the icon size. You can use the slider, but I prefer typing in the values, so 6 pixels for my icon. Next, we can change the icon color. I'll put the same color I used for the button text. And this was the icon color for the normal display settings. Under the hover settings, we have the icon hover color. And we have the move icon option. This option is responsible for this tiny animation effect that makes the icon move when we hover over the button. By default, it's set to horizontal short, but you can change that to horizontal and get this look. Or you can pick vertical, which looks like this. And with diagonal, you get this effect. And finally, you can set this to none to keep the icon stationary on hover. For my button, I'll keep the horizontal short animation. Then after this, we have the icon margin option. If I start to increase the values evenly all around, you can see how the icon gets more space around it. Since I don't need the same amount of space on all sides, I'll reset and delink the field so I can set each side separately. And I'll put 2 pixels at the top and 10 pixels on the left. That's all. I'll leave the others blank. Underneath this, we have the button inner border style. When we open it, we can see it's empty. This is because I'm using the standard button type instead of the one with inner border. I don't need the options for something I'm not using. And it's the same thing with the button underline style settings. There's nothing there because I haven't enabled the button text underline. However, this last section, background style, has some options for us. One is the overlay color. So this is a color that would cover the entire element background. Let me show you. I'll use this one for example. Then I can give it a degree of transparency and we get this look. So this is an easy option for showing off your brand colors or matching the site color palette. And when we switch over to the hover settings, we get a few more options. One is the hover overlay color. So we can set an overlay that will be visible on hover. And we have the background image hover effect. The default one is zoom in and it looks like this. And if you keep it or you zoom out, then you can choose the background image hover zoom origin as well. This means you can pick which part of the image will be the focus of the zoom. The center is the default one, but there's also top, bottom, left, and right. And let's not forget that other than zoom in, there are other hover effects we can set, such as zoom out and move, as well as none. This will remove any background image hover effects on your banner. And this is the one I want to keep. In fact, this is the banner design I want to use. So I can update the page to save my work. Now, if you'd like to make multiple banners following the same design, you can do that easily by right-clicking on your finished banner and selecting Duplicate. Then you can drag it over to the right place on your page. For my second banner, I'll replace the content and the image. Starting with the image, I'll use this one. Insert media. And now I'll just type over the old title, there, and the text too. Since I duplicated the element, I already have all the style, layout, and alignment settings I want to use. So all I have left to do is replace the content. 
Of course, you can use the same banner with the same content in different locations on your page. In that case, you'll be done even quicker. Okay, my second banner is ready, so let me update the page. And here we are, two very lovely banners with link buttons ready to be used for whatever you may need. Now, if we look back over the widgets page, we can see the different design variations that you can make with the banners widget from the key add-ons for Elementor plugin. Whether you choose to mirror what you see here, as I did, or to create something unique, it's entirely up to you. You can create groups of banners as we see here, or add a single one to your page. Whatever you decide to do, this is a very versatile widget with a lot of possibilities. And I hope this tutorial has helped you to see some of them, and that going through this together has shown you how easy making elements can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its banners widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!